fun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire Line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, new for 2021, standing at Gainesway. Well, last year's road to the Kentucky Derby seemed to take forever, with it being the Derby being postponed by four months. By comparison, this year's almost quaint, just seven and a half months from start to finish. The last two races on that road to the Kentucky Derby are this weekend. I'm Jay Privman, along with Marty McGee. We do the Derby Watch Top 20, and Marty, we're going to take a look at those final two races, beginning with the one that's got the most points, but the smaller field of the two, the six-horse, $1 million Arkansas Derby, headed by Concert Tour, one of the top choices for the Derby right now. He, along with Hosier and Caddo River, all exiting the Rebel last month at uh, Oaklawn, the big prep for this race. So give me your thoughts on these horses and how they performed that day. Well, the last time they ran, Jay, uh, Caddo River was, what, 6-5, to five, and Concert Tour was 8-5, to five, and Joel Rosario took the fight right to... Florent Giroux uh, went ahead and won it, what, by four, four plus lengths. And, uh, you know, that was then, and this is now. I don't know if there will be a different strategy for uh, Cattle River. He's drawn inside of uh, Concert Tour once again. Those look like the principles. You also do have Hosier, who ran uh, surprisingly well. He was, what, 18 to 1, and the Rebel went second. So um, you think those are the principles. Uh, a few outsiders in here, but... I think some of the bubble people, the, the folks who have horses right on the 20-horse cutoff for the Derby are hoping that Contra Tour goes ahead and runs to form. That way, nobody else gets those points and, and leapfrogs them. So uh, I would imagine at even money on the Oakland Morning Lines, Contra Tour probably be a tick or two below that three to five or four to five. And if he runs back, Jay, he ought to win. I, I Yeah, I, I think he's going to win again, Marty. Uh, I thought he was much the best in the rebel he's trained well coming out of the race and it looks to me like it, it, it's his race to lose you know i don't know what to make a Caddo river i i know there was some discussion over whether florentio rode a, a smart race last time in the rebel i thought the options presented to him uh, he made the correct choice i mean to sit to sit second stalking concert tour was not a bad spot to be in i just thought he wasn't good enough uh, yeah we talked and, right yeah, i'm sorry I'm sorry. Yeah, we, I mean, we talked about it, at, you know, in the aftermath, how that was. He just didn't have the horse. That's exactly. not to say, though, he won't have the horse on Saturday, which is circling back to one of my points here. And we'll see if uh, if he does. As for Hosier, as you mentioned, a big step up last time when running second behind his stablemate. He's also worked well coming out of the race. And, you know, maybe he's one of these late developing kind of horses who's going to continue to get better. I don't think he's as good as concert tour. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if these two ran one two again, just like they did last month. Well, I'm sure with this small field that he's going to be able to get a real good spot behind those two front runners. I mean, if Giroux insists on going and not letting Rosario pass him for quite a while, it, they might enter into something ruinous whereby Hozier would be able to pick him up. So I'm, I'm sure that that uh, Bob Baffert wouldn't mind seeing that, at least in terms of uh, Hozier. So that race is worth 170 points overall with 100 to the winner. The only other point scoring race, uh, and this is the, these are the last two races for which you can earn points, is the Lexington. That's on Saturday at Keeneland. Marty, you've been chronicling that race. It's worth 32 points overall, 20 to the winner. And earlier this week, uh, a little bit of a surprise, I think, that the connections of Proxy decided to come back three weeks after his fourth place finish in the Louisiana Derby rather than just sit on him till the Kentucky Derby. What are your expectations for proxy on Saturday? Well, I had a conversation with Mike Stidham about this, and it, it was, like you said, it was kind of surprising that they, uh, you know, jumped up and became a uh, an entrant in the uh, Lexington, which, by the way, has a field of 10. Nobody else on our, on our top 20 list. But I don't know, Jay, if they're all that serious about trying to make the Derby. I mean, if he were to win by five or six or whatever, on Saturday, I think they would be compelled to move on. If he runs okay, let's say it's a hard-fought win, or he's second, I think what they're more apt to do is go ahead and skip the Derby, run in the Preakness. So 
you know, Godolphin does have the luxury of having the favorite and elusive, uh, elusive quality, essential quality uh, for the Derby, the, the likely favorite. So that's that comes into play in, in terms of their decision making. But if you go and look at the form, Proxy should win. He's got Johnny Velasquez to ride. He'll probably be even money or so off those really solid efforts down in New Orleans all winter. He was second in, in both the LeCompte and the Risen Star. He was fourth in Louisiana Derby. A bit of a disappointment there, but he does have some buyer numbers to go back to that if he runs those, uh, he really ought to win on Saturday. You know, Marty, one thing I was struck by in the Louisiana Derby is that even though he finished fourth and it was a little bit of a regression from the two second place finishes in the prior two stakes, as you were mentioning, this was a horse who to me looked like there was really no point in the race where he was putting forth a full effort. And he was, he was beaten less than four lengths. And to me, you know, I don't think he's that far away from the, the top horses in that race, let alone this, this division. He just hasn't, to me, he just hasn't put it all together yet. Maybe that'll happen on Saturday, but maybe he's more of a long-term project. But I think there's more there than we've seen so far. Uh, I think the dynamics of this race, Jay, going the short stretch mile and 16th versus the mile and 3 16th, where it was kind of a merry-go-round race in the Louisiana Derby, I think there, there's quite a bit of speed in front of him here. So this might show us if he has the kind of kick, at least in a, in a race like this, again, a mile and 16th is different than, than the Kentucky Derby is going to be. But if he punches in hard uh, off of a, what I would expect would be a fast pace, then maybe... You know, it's like Mike Stidham said, I can't answer your question about the Derby because I was ask, asking him if he, we should keep him on the top 20 until we see what he does on Saturday. So I'm sure he's as interested as anybody. Yeah, we will all be interested in seeing what happens on Saturday because after these two races, all the points will be have given out. We'll know where everybody stands. And then for the next three weeks, it'll just be some scoreboard watching to see who stays on the list and uh, who gets injured. Unfortunately, it happens all the time. Who's going to come out? But obviously, we will chronicle all of that for you here at DRF.com. So make sure you come back next week as we recap these two races we previewed. Obviously, here at uh, DRF.com, you'll find a recap of the three big stakes races from last week and all the news leading up to both the Lexington with Marty covering that and the Arkansas Derby. Mary Rampolini has been all over that race and I've got a feature on the point situation as well as uh, the defection of greatest honor. So comprehensive derby coverage right here at DRF.com. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. We'll see you next week.